Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Pain in the Grass is back. That's right, Pain 2019. It's going to be huge. Yes. Three big days. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, July 30th, Friday, August 2nd, Saturday, August 3rd, all happening at the White River Amphitheater. And with big days like that, you know the lineup is going to be nuts, man. Oh, yeah. You got Rob Zombie. You got Volby. Marilyn Manson. Disturbed. Slipknot. Yeah, buddy. Lots of great local bands, too. Very excited for our, our buddy Ryan the Beard from Metal Shop. His band Pound is going to be there on Saturday's show, nice. which is going to be freaking killer. I can't wait to see those guys. Also, uh, our buddy Kyle from Superfecta. His band Superfecta will be a part of this, as well as other great local bands. Yeah, tickets are on sale as I'm speaking. LiveNation.com. That's where you can get them. $2 from each ticket sold, benefiting the Vitology Foundation. They do a lot of great work locally. You want more information? You know where to go. KISW.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. To so everybody scream his name. Beat Mix. Don't be a loser. Whoa. Whoa. Beat Mix. You're a loser. It is time to Beat Mix. But it's Wednesday, so let's whack him instead. Whack it. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Whack it. Or make an attempt to whack you because you were very good earlier today. Thank well, you. he was okay today. It's just unfortunately the contestant was a little. Uh, what are you talking about? If a baseball team wins six to one, when you say that baseball team crushed it, crushed it, I crushed it. Steve DJ. crushed it. Is that what? Is that what? I going crushed on? the competition. Yeah, yes, right, and we need that competition to step up. So maybe yeah. we can whack Steve. Yeah. And today we got Thomas and Olympia to take on Steve. Thomas, are you there, sir? Yes, I am. What up, BJ? Hey, what's up, Thomas? <laughs> what's he playing for today, Steve? Tickets to see Weezer. They're going to be at the Washington State Ooh. Fair on September 1st. Go to KISW.com for all the details. If you want to see Weezer, you can get your tickets now at thefair.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing at home, Thomas will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Thomas, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. What Going va- down, Steve. Nice. What variety show included the critics Waldorf and Statler? That is uh, Muppets. Yes. Which state is directly south of Georgia? What state is directly south of Georgia? Mm-hmm. Florida. Yes. Yeah. What was Marky Mark's backing band? Funky Bunch. Yes. The prefix helio pertains to what? What was that? The prefix helio pertains to what? Pass. How many spikes are there on the Statue of Liberty's crown? Six. No. Eight. No. Five. No. What breed Four. of dog is McGruff the Crime Dog? Bloodhound. Yes. In sports, what does the L in LPGA stand for? LPGA. Um, yes. How many Oscars was the film The Sixth Sense nominated for? Four. No. Six. Yes. Nice. What sank the Titanic? Iceberg. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. All right. We'll see. Decent score there. Not too shabby. And that was enough uh, earlier today to maybe get a tie for uh, the contestant if That's they right. could have done better. We'll have to see if Steve can do better or if he does worse or if he does the same. I mean, there's only three things you can do. Wow, man. Is there anywhere else we can go with that? Uh, no. variety over here. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that's about all we can do. He could quit. He could just stop altogether. That's true. I mean, if Steve just walked out the door... He could also drop dead. Oh, I wasn't going to go there, but took a dark turn. I'm just curious when you guys are going to stop talking and play the game. Oh, whoa. Well, hey, Steve. Hey, look at this. I'm here to win. Are you ready? 
Oh, yeah. I don't know. Am I going to win? Am I going to lose? Or am I going to tie, Rev? We don't know. Or will he drop dead? What variety? <laughs> I hope not, man. That would be an awkward yeah, I don't, way to end the show. It would be. Sure it would be. What variety show included the critics Waldorf and Statler? The Muppets. Yes. <laughs> Which state is directly south of Georgia? Georgia South. No. Georgia Florida. South. Yes. What was Marky Mark's backing band? The Funky Bunch. Yes. The prefix helio yo, pertains yo. to what? Air. No. Hi. No. Words. No. Words. How many spikes are there on the Statue of Liberty's crown? Six. No. Nine. No. Seven. Yes. What breed of dog is McGruff the crime dog? A uh, hound. No. Basset hound. No. A hound dog. No. no in sports, what does the L and LPGA stand for? Lesbian. No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> ladies? Yes. How many Oscars was the film The Sixth Sense nominated for? Six. Yes. <laughs> what sank the Titanic? Danny's Frozen Tears. No. <laughs> yeah. The iceberg. Yes. James Woods played Hades in what 1997 Disney movie? <laughs> Whoa. Sleeping Beauty. I don't know. No. <laughs> One, Cinderella. No. no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you win. Oh, seven uh, to six. Sorry, Thomas. Dang. That's all right. You're so close. close. The best. So close. It's simply the best. I don't know if it's simply the best. Seven to six is not exactly. It's a win's a win. We already talked about that earlier. But we, if we can call six to one a crushing, then this is this he is not a crushing. By, yeah, yeah so he's a little squeaker by, there. Yeah, it's simply the best. It definitely does. You know, <laughs> the best uh, one. Uh, We're the best uh, for right now. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with any of this. Well, I don't care if you do or don't, BJ. I'm happy <laughs> I won the game. I'm happy yeah. you won as well. Oh, fine then. I'll be happy too. You danced all around McGruff the Crime Dog, but I couldn't give it to you. It's a bloodhound. Oh, there are different hounds. No, you're right. So I couldn't, and uh, I had this argument with the wife about basset hounds and bloodhounds. Basset hounds have itty bitty legs. <laughs> yeah, okay. these are the arguments I have at night. So, oh, uh, good for you. Yeah. Um, so I had to make sure you did say the bloodhound. No, you right. didn't. That's right, buddy. Uh, does anybody know what the prefix Helio pertains to? I have a game called Helios Expanse, and it's about six planets or so. Is that is it a six thing? No. Oh, never mind. But it is sort of about things in space. Oh, that's not what I thought. Oh. I was thinking oh. blood. No. Uh, is, it, is it about a moon or a... Uh, Almost? Planet? Uh, the sun. Oh. Oh, the sun. Yes. Oh, that's right. There are six solar systems in the game. Dang it. See, you're that's almost a, there. I Your board almost games there. almost got you the it answer. almost got me there. You're, now, now that I knew there was something about six. It was six suns that I have in the game. Yep. There you go. Ah, uh, damn it. And I know, I'm pretty sure that Danny and Vicky both know who uh, uh, James Woods plays Hades in what Disney movie? Hercules. 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 <laughs> no, that was a different movie, but oh. yeah. Hercules. I just recently saw it on Netflix. It still holds up. Really? Hercules does? Oh. It's so fun. All the music and singing. See, I, I didn't like it because when so I... Was Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. no. This is a cartoon <laughs> Disney version. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, this was no. Oh, you're my, talking about like the old like 70s or yeah. 80s one where he like overdubbed him because they couldn't, nobody could understand yeah. Arnold at the time. I had no idea there's a cartoon Hercules. Yeah, yeah, it came out well in uh, 97, 97, like yeah. I said. <laughs> wow, that's a while ago, man. Yeah, I had the VHS. It was great. Wow. Hey, some of the B makes police are chiming in, wanting to know <sighs> if you would have accepted uh, water because water sank the Titanic. <laughs> Or what about flooding? Because flooding actually sunk the Titanic. I kind of thought that too. I mean, if somebody would have said that, I mean, I'm glad that you guys both decided to go with the logical answer, which was the iceberg. I love the troll police. Yeah, I keep them coming. Yeah. yeah, or they said, "Oh yeah, a failure to turn when they saw something or anything like that." I mean, sure, whatever. So yeah. awesome, water dummies. Yeah, well, whatever. Congratulations, Steve. You won with seven correct. That means call number seven. Guess what you're doing? You're getting tickets to see Weezer at Washington State Fair. Caller number seven two zero six four two one rock and you be a winner. Got a new study that analyzed 34 million employees. This is a big study. Okay. I'll take this. 34 million employees analyzed, figured out a way to make solid predictions on whether someone's going to quit in the next nine months. And they've come up with five signs to look for. They stop showing up. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big one. They're stealing a lot of pens. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, and, and part of it is like a big, they call it a big drop in engagement. It means the person just doesn't seem like they care about their work or the company anymore. Yeah, I've been that guy. Did you quit soon after that or you just, you just. I usually, it was usually I had to get fired. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but I knew that I was, I was done. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, their work isn't challenging them anymore. So if somebody's around here going, yeah, uh, just, I don't know, I'm not challenged. Yeah, this is uh, very this, this this is very familiar to me actually. They feel like they can't openly talk about pay with their boss or ask for a raise, especially when they feel like they're underpaid or deserve a bonus. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, you should and, be able to talk to you. I mean, yeah. maybe not like walk in the halls like, "Hey, boss, where's my raise?" But you yeah. should be able to have a meeting with your boss and say, "I'm not happy with the money I'm making." Yeah how how else can you get ahead if you don't have that? I know people don't like to talk about money, but I mean, I tried once though, and I never tried again. Then, then thank, thankfully, we have our, our guy Paul. Yeah. But the first <laughs> first time I remember, I was making nothing. I was working as an apartment manager just so I could pay my bills and not have to worry about paying for for rent. And I finally like talked to the main the big the big dog. And it was the most awkward meeting. He just got up and walked out on me. Really? Yeah. I was just like, hey, man, I just would like to be able to not have to work as an apartment manager if I did the math. And it wasn't like I was asking for much more. It was just a few thousand dollars more a year. And he's just like, as soon as I started talking about it, he just slowly started walking away. And he's like, all right, well, I got to go. And never even gave me an answer. Like, wow. Never even said no. Just uncomfortably walked yes. out. Not even. I and thought you he, remember the guy. It was a guy from back in the uh, day. Oh, what is with that? You were not a fan of that guy. And I think you'd understand yeah. why. And I was just like, you you jerk. Yeah, I, I know. I know that guy. It was God. like a power play, I think, on his part. I, I just, you know, I... <laughs> Honestly, that you know, I don't hold a lot of grudges. But if I saw that guy, I'd go. I hope your life is miserable. I, 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 just, I hope wow. you have diarrhea and traffic. Yeah, yeah wow. I mean, just like I, 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 I want to talk to him just to see if he's miserable. Hey, how's mm-hmm. it going? Oh, your life sucks. Good. Yeah. Just I'm still waiting on that answer, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I feel like our business has gotten better, at least around here anyway. But, we've, yeah. you know, I, you just can't. you you got to be able to have a reasonable conversation about money in life. You just do. And, look, I think is if you're a boss, you have to be able to say, look, where you are, you're at your maximum. Mm-hmm. And then talk about what does that mean? What does the future mean? Does someone get to go do something else? Or do they got to go find another job in another company? Which I've always been, look, if that's the case, I'll help. You know, what, do you, what, do, what, do I, what, what can I do for you? Because people used to get mad at me. You know, because I went and had those conversations. Uh huh. And then I was told I was selfish for wanting more money. And I'm like, but you make a good living and they've been paying you more. Why aren't you selfish? It's so funny. I yeah, know. it's like, what is that? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, so you're telling me you don't want to make more money? Yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah. Next on this list of the things that are the signs that people are going to quit their job in the next few months. The folks feel like they can't openly talk about pay with their boss. Oh, I just did that. Excuse me. They don't like their boss altogether. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, so that's yeah. Well, that could be why they don't openly talk with the boss. They don't like him. Somebody says, my workplace prevents anybody from talking about pay at work. That's, well, well then what do you talk about it? At lunch. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's I mean, weird. openly talking well, about pay, com- I mean. Company Christmas party. You're not at the job. Now, I, look, we're not, I mean, look, we're, we are discouraged from running around talking about pay at the job. I think most places are. But if you have a, you can't walk into the office and talk to the bosses and charge you money about money, who else are you supposed to talk to about it? Somebody said, I asked for a raise once. My boss said I could get a raise at my next job. Inspiration for finding a new job. Yeah, that, what is what, a douche what, answer. What a douche answer, yeah. Yeah. And it was they discourage people talking about how much they make because they don't want people then being like, "Hey, I should be being paid more." Because this being it, it, it is a funny thing that they've brainwashed all of us, and we're all guilty of it. Nobody wants to talk about how much they're making. Yeah, and really, who, who's it? Ben, it's benefiting your bo- your, your company. Because then they, they, I mean, look at baseball or sports or anything along those lines. There was once a time where they didn't know what their their teammates were making. Yeah, they're probably happy with. Which maybe is a good or a bad thing. Who knows? Because nowadays you got people who are like, I want to be the highest paid player and therefore I need to make $40 million a year. And I know some yeah. people don't like talking about it because you think the other person's going to get mad. It's like, you shouldn't be making this much money. But in reality, a lot of times it's like, well, I should be getting paid more. This is unfair. And in some occasions, I think, I wonder if it would be down, better. Man. Yeah, I wonder if it would be better. It's a tough it's one. Just, it's a weird societal thing we have. It is a tough one because everyone has their own idea of why they should be paid what they are. But nobody will ever look in the mirror and go, how much money am I actually making for my company? Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Like, I just look at that and go, how much am I generating and and what's a a fair percentage of what I generate to get back? It's like a commission-based thing, even though we're not on commission. But most people, they go, I should be making what that person's making. And I'm looking at them and going, but you're not generating the income that that person's generating. So why should you get paid the same? Well, we do the same. I go, no, actually that person does it better 
That's I mean that's why they're making more money. That's why I like you. Everyone gets all weird about the the NFL contracts. I don't care because hey, I'm not paying these players anything, so it doesn't matter to me what they're getting paid. But then you got to think about it as these guys putting their lives on the line. Their their their, their quality of life is going to suck and sometime down the line, and they they know they're making a lot of money for their team. So of course they want to get a cut of that. Yeah, I heard Peyton Manning can't even tie his shoes because he can't get down. He can't with his back. He can't bend down to tie his own shoes. Really? I don't know if that's true, but I had heard that like at the tail end of his career, it's like all of the stuff he's had done to his back to stay alive. I don't. I, I thought I read that that he can't tie his shoes. Well, he should do what I do. Just keep him tied all the time and just slide your feet in there. I think that's exactly what he's doing. Or he wears a lot logic. of loafers. Or just get Crocs like the Rev. Yeah, there you go. Uh, can you look that up, Rev, or somebody? Because I maybe I'm making that up, but I could have sworn I read that he's in a position where he can't even tie his shoes or maybe it was another NFL uh, player. It said that yeah, he couldn't he can't take off his own cleats. Yeah. That's Which, how bad I mean, it, yeah, it is the shoes, so yeah. That's even worse. I mean, at least you can take off your own stuff. I might putting it back on might be tough. So it's like he's a kid again. Remember when like little kids have to have like their parents put their shoes on them for the, Yeah. I mean, you know, goof a little, but that does suck. So, I mean, yeah, he deserves the money he gets for that because I could still put my shoes on. And he made his his franchises, because he had worked play for a couple of teams, and he made them a crap ton of money. Yeah, he took them to championships. Yeah. yeah. And the merchandise. Yeah. And finally, what is an indicator that someone's going to be quitting their job very soon? They don't see a path to growing and advancing at the job. Well, again, that's the same thing. You know, because that's how you make more money, is if, the, if you go to another position, you can grow, you advance. And look, there are some positions that will always be entry level. That's the other thing you got to recognize is like, look, you know, I, I wish we could do more, but this is going to always be an entry level position and there's going to be a lot of turnover. So he says, I got a zero, a point zero zero one percent raise. The boss said you could get a can of Coke a month with this raise. Wow. Oh, God. Wow. Because inflation still happens. You know, yeah, you, I, I mean, saw Red the Stripper posting on her Twitter. I mean, she's talking about, you know, they raised the price of renting the, the, the facility at a strip club, and then all the guys that show up are expecting still the $20 lap dance. It's like, you know, times have changed. See? Strippers got bills you to You got to go 25 now? <laughs> no, 40, I think. 40? 30 to 40 bucks. That's a huge jump. They, well, what did they do? Did they double her price for her rental? I could see 25, 30, maybe 30. Yeah, when I was a dancer, it was 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, when I, when I was a dancer, they would just give you, like, beaver pelts, as it were. <laughs> what? Wow. Well, I danced way back in the day. Is that the name of the club? Old. Yeah, yeah. Beaver, beaver pelts was the name of the club. They used to pay them into blooms. This is back in the old log cabin days. Yeah. yeah, I saw it on their Twitter. I guess, like, guys are complaining about the fact that, they, you know, they have to pay all this money for her. That's a jump in, that's a double jump, though. Well, I think that is. It's been that way for a minute, but people just have it in their head that they're they're twenty dollar dances. Oh, I wouldn't expect to be twenty bucks anymore. I mean, they were twenty bucks when I used to go. Yeah, and that's that's been a while. So it's got to be at least thirty to forty now. <laughs> it says, "Hey, my rent to my club's going up again. That means rent with inflation. Why would you think dances should stay stagnant? If a girl is cheap, she's cheap for a reason. Meditate on that. You pay for pretty." That's so why I said that's how we worked our contract. We paid for pretty. Like, hey, Intercom, you yeah. paid for pretty. That's what we told them. Which is why we're not getting paid a lot. No, <laughs> that was not a good argument, Steve. Because no. they showed us many, they showed us much more prettier people working for the company. We we shouldn't have used we that. Put our best argument. foot forward. We put Danny in front. Yeah, we put hey, the skyliner thanks. on. Yeah, so pretty. If we could have got paid, his hair. If we got to get paid for whiny, we'd be skillionaires. True. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Think about that. If we could pay for misery, Steve, I'd be rolling in the dough. Well, we could always uh, fall back on the, the dancing career. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, at least I'm the professional dancer here. None of you have ever danced before. I have. And you have a pole in your house. Yeah, I do. I thought Sarah was the professional dancer. I, I actually don't mean it in a dirty way. No. I. Well, I mean, That's uh, stripper. She did da- oh. Stripper dancer is what I'm talking about. Uh, I did it one time for charity. Did you, did. Did, you took your clothes off, but did you dance? What were yes. your moves? What were your signature moves? Did you give a lap dance. Uh, nobody wanted one, but I would have. <laughs> That's so sad. Sorry. Wah, wah. Yeah, people actually paid me to stay away. <laughs> you go, we'll just throw the money at you. Stay 15 feet. Put more clothes on. Yeah, that was pretty much it. All right, it is time for Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Your calls, your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. Whatever you want to talk about, 
This is your corral, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Your I don't golden know. corral. It's your golden corral. Order what you oh, want. Buffet. We yeah. got to talk about buffet so right now, good. man. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> so hungry. But do remember, when you're at the golden corral of this fine program, <laughs> you can't just eat what you want. You got to make sure you eat it the proper way. You got to shift some energy and bring it when you eat that food. Otherwise, we will gong you. And politely ask you to leave our establishment. Yes. Goodbye, old friend. 206 421 Rock, Texas at 77999. Let's go to Nathan in Bainbridge. Nathan, you are on the Rock. Hey, how's it going? I was uh, listening to you guys earlier about uh, the Amazon wanting keys to your garage. Yeah, it's like a special little remote thing and a special key that'll be on your garage that will open your garage door so they can put your packages in there instead of leaving them on your porch or on the front door. Right. Well, the first thing that came to my mind is that movie Don't Breathe. The main concept of that movie was there's a security company and they had keys to people's houses. Well, the son was stealing the keys to go rob the houses. Oh. So even even if the, the delivery people weren't going to be doing anything bad, your key to your house is still somewhere out there or your garage door. Yeah. See, it I gives mean, an opportunity yeah. for somebody to get their hands on it that shouldn't. Yeah, see, that's the thing, Nathan. I can't trust anybody. And especially because of the movies. Again, we learned something. <laughs> we, we learned stuff from movies, movies and TV shows. Nathan makes a good point. So it's, don't trust anybody. Yeah, somebody like Message saying, you know, I, I work there and there's some strict rules and this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, oh, there's strict rules everywhere. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be somebody that's going to just abuse their privilege. Yeah, and that's the problem. Problem. I don't know what to do, man, because I like the convenience of getting my stuff delivered. But I mean, uh, the porch pirates are pissing me off. Yeah. Am I going to have to go back to the post office? Is that what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to, or, or use a locker? I think that like, you got to create those boxes. I mean, I think they exist, but like, you know, something where it's like a postman can have access to it so they could put your packages in like some kind of a safe in front of your house. house. Yeah. Almost yeah. like one of those anti uh, bear things at the, at, in like Yellowstone and stuff like that. Well, there was the old day where they had the exactly little mail like slot. That, but completely different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember they had the, I mean, a lot of, a lot of doors had the mail slot. You just, yep. they would stick it in. So maybe we need a, a big slot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how big of a slot there, buddy? Oh, well, I'll let big you enough to that. fit a box. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, two zero six four two one Rock Texas at seven seven nine nine nine. Somebody wanted to know when did you get in the most trouble as a kid? Ooh. Ooh, what's the worst thing that got you in trouble as a kid? Is what they asked. Yeah, when I set fire to the lamp. <laughs> yeah, that was lamp bad. in your house. <laughs> yeah, wow. Was it intentional? Yes. Was this because you were first discovering fire with your fellow cavemen? That's what it was. <laughs> I thought this was really cool. I think we got something here, boys. Yeah. Well, you know, like I, I, I was fascinated, and there were lighters around the house because my parents were smokers. Yep. And I just was thinking, I wonder what would happen. And of course, in those days. You know, they didn't really uh, have the flame retardant products that they should have, <laughs> and so that lamp went up. Man, that reminds me, yeah, like, I got in a lot of trouble for lighting fires next to the house, little little paper fires, mm-hmm. and then, but it was right next to, like, all of these roofing supplies that, Ooh. yeah, that, yeah, it was, I could have literally burned down my grandparents' house just instantly. Yep. That would have been a yeah, lot I got worse. a lot of trouble for that. The yeah. biggest trouble for me, you guys, we always give me a hard time about is the time that I urinated in a suit of armor that was at my <laughs> parents' house. <laughs> yeah, that's... I don't uh, remember the rhyme or reason and why, but I remember doing it. And I don't know why I thought that the suit of armor would hold it. And where... None of this makes sense. No, it every right to be pissed. How old, how old were you again? Uh, 15, 16? I was uh, 37. 37? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> no, I was... Dude, I was probably 12. So you were almost a teenager? I would say between 10 and 12, yeah. Okay, that's old enough to know. Yeah, I would accept that as like maybe like a four to like no. eight year old. <laughs> no, I was old enough to know. Oh, man. And then you... the other time I got in trouble was when I urinated in the garbage pail in our in our kitchen. Why did you Yeah, why did you yeah. Because I was so drunk that I thought I was in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, so you were, you were older as well. Yeah, I was back home from college and went out drinking with the boys and came home and thought I was in the bathroom. Oh, man. Sobered up rather quickly when mom's yelling at you, stay right, what are you doing? And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, man, dude. Yeah. So your mom walks in while you're just draining it. Mm-hmm. Gosh, between your grandmother and your mother, man. Know, they, they, right? they, your family's seen you do disturbing things. Yeah. <laughs> They're very proud of me. Yeah, nobody saw you with the. But didn't, how did they suss out that you were the one that urinated in the armor? But well, my brother told them. <laughs> oh, okay. Good job, brother. He saw it happen. 
Oh, he was there. Did he yeah. egg you on to do it? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. So he eggs you on, then dimes you out. Pretty much. Yeah, that's a good brother. Yeah. <laughs> that's Dad awesome. was... Uh, well, Dad was angry. Yeah. <laughs> he was peed off, yes. is what you're saying. How about you, Vicky? Uh, I think when I was in fifth grade, I got in trouble for quote-unquote hitting a kid. I didn't hit him. He was, like, kicking dirt all over my sweater I had put down. I go to get the sweater, you know, cleaned off, and a rock hits him. And then the recess teacher's like, you hit him. I get in trouble, and a letter gets sent home. I go and grab the letter before my parents, and I put it at the bottom of the garbage can. I'm thinking I'm safe. But somehow it got out and it got stuck to the bottom of the garbage can and my parents found it. Oh, oh no. And I was just like, damn it, I should have ripped it up and then I had to explain. Like, oh, sometimes when I dump out the garbage, there's one little thing that stays there. That's right. what happened? Yeah. Oh, it's like a little prize. And so it was all, you know, covered in garbage juice and they're like, hey, do you care to explain this? Oh, uh, well, yeah. It wouldn't have been so bad if I would have told them, but the fact that I tried to hide it, it's what yeah. got me in trouble. What about Danny? I think it was when I was in high school and I tried to sneak out. I used to sneak out of my window, but I feel I realized that like I could just walk out my back door and my mom wouldn't notice. Well, I thought she wouldn't, but she heard the car of my friends who picked me up driving off. So I came back at like two o'clock in the morning and I walk into the house like thinking I was all incognito. It was dark. And then all of a sudden I hear, what are you doing? And I was like. And I'm busted. Yeah. And so I got grounded for a week. It lasted about three days. My mom didn't have the heart to keep the grounding up with me. So yeah. I think that was the longest I was ever grounded. Three days. Yeah. I was grounded for a month after the, the suit of armor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you grew up in the wrong time, Steve. I did. Your parents were soft during Danny's day. Yeah. The grand daddy didn't urinate in that suit of armor. That's true. What about your kids? How, what, what is the most trouble that you... Like, how, how, like oh, what, what made to... you the angriest with them? Oh, well, uh, who? Sarah... Uh, I think you know. I think with Joe, definitely it was with the fake new the, the, the fake report that he did in school. Yeah, and I wanted to punish him more severely than my wife did, um, and, and that's always how it was. Uh, and uh, Sarah, I'm trying to think. I think it's. Um, I think just when she got banned from the Walgreens. For being a, for being an idiot with sentences. I guess there was another thing with fire. So she was like father, like daughter. Was that the most trouble you got into? Yeah, I would say getting banned. You didn't really punish me all that much. Why'd you get banned again? My boyfriend at the time <laughs> was trying to light my pants on fire. Why? I don't know. But uh, the they, my pants caught fire and then the lighter kind of just was the whole thing was on fire too. So he threw it and it was like super close to someone's car. Mm -hmm. That person was not happy. He told the manager. Manager came out. Banned for life. But nice. I've been back. You've been back? Okay. Well, we went back one time. Do you like, wear like a hood over your head and stuff? Well, the first time I was like, they're not going to notice. It's going to be fine. My girlfriend and I, who was also with me for the whole uh, fire thing, we went in and she recognized us and kicked us out immediately. There we go. So then we waited... We waited a year or two to actually go back till the managers probably wasn't there yeah, anymore. A, a nice thing for a high turnover with retail is, yeah, the people that ban you, they're gone. Unless they got your face, their face up in the, in the locker room there and they go, watch out for this kid. Which would be actually really cool if there were just like posters of my face around like the drugstore being like, if you see this person kick her out, I'd be like, oh, wow. That would be kind of cool. Actually. Right? Yeah, like a little fake mug shot. No, I think, I don't know many, I think maybe the multiple, like, mirrors I've knocked off my window. I, was, or, I thought it had to be a car stuff. Or one where we just got the house repainted, and I was putting my car into the garage, yeah. and I missed the garage and kind of got the side of the house that was just freshly painted, yeah. and now the paint is still on my car. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. How do you miss a garage? I, I was too far... On, She's a good kid, isn't she? On my driver's side. Yeah. I wanted to make sure the passenger had plenty of room to get out, you right. know? And then you just hear the scraping. Oh, so close your eyes and hope for the best. I do, yeah. I do. I still do that in parking garages, too. On Sometimes the driver's side. Like, I could see on the uh, passenger side, because you can't see as well. You uh, you hit it on the driver's side, yeah, which is I just did. a miracle. Yeah, sometimes I close my eyes, and I'm like, I can make this turn. I got oh, it. I got it. No. You can't close your eyes when you drive. I know. My poor yeah. car. Yeah. And even then, you didn't get in really that much trouble. Did yeah. You, did you pay or anything? You didn't even have to pay. But no, I mean, I feel like after the third mirror on the si on my uh, driver's side window, I think you guys just kind of like laughed at me. Yeah. And just, I was always nervous about it. I was like, oh, another one? God, I'm, so, I'm such an idiot. How do I get my license? Yes. Yeah, I question that. Good question. Yeah. Well, I didn't pass the first time, so. That's right. I forgot All about that. All makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Joe? 
Oh man, I got plenty. Uh, we got we got the great project right. That was awesome, uh, but that was just the start. Then I broke a, a really rich family's towel rack that cost oh, thousands of dollars. What? Oh yeah. yeah what, you trying to do pull ups on it? I body slammed my friend into it. Nice. Yeah, him and Coke Can Boy. Him and his partner, the idiot that's launching Coke cans from our deck in the neighborhood. They, they, that, that was a, just a dynamic duo there. Yeah, I caught community service for the towel rack and Coke Can Boy dines me out. That's the only reason we got in trouble for that. He was like, oh, yeah, I told Joey we should clean up the frozen Coke can explosions in the freezer and not throw them into the cul-de-sac. It's way more fun to throw them into the cul-de-sac. Yeah. It seems like you and I both had friends that just would die myself because I had a friend that died me out, too, one time. And I was like, what are you doing? We're getting off scot-free. But one of my favorites was what actually kind of a coat rack or thing, towel rack cost thousands of dollars. Dude, it's called Mercer Island. Mm-hmm. Honestly, dude. Well, the problem <laughs> was, Steve. Like gold. It was just like, I couldn't believe it either. See, I t- I see he was like a weapon. See, I-, I smashed him into the wall and then broke the wall and the towel rack fell. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to hit him with the towel rack now. <laughs> okay. Didn't go yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't just the towel rack. It was like they had to redo the whole wall and everything because, I mean, they were idiots. They really, I mean, and this is still, like, are you still friends with Coke Boy? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, he lives in, I think, Minnesota now. But. He's a lawyer now, isn't he? Yeah. I think we now, now but he's probably going to run for office, and as soon as he does, we're going to start putting this stuff out there. Oh, do you want this guy? Let's tell you what he did when he was a kid. Revenge. Yeah. And uh, Joe would, I would try to punish the hell out of him, but Kathy wouldn't do it. Kathy was like uh, Danny's mom. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we got to teach the kid a lesson. And she's just like, no. Let's you, would, you would like try to starve him, though. Like, I remember mom and I, he would be like, Joey can't eat Jeez. for a week or something. And I remember, like it was yesterday, <laughs> my mom and I sneaking my brother fluff and nutter sandwiches, like through the door. Uh, t- <laughs> <the> door crack? <laughs> yeah. Kathy never She's was like, on board with here, any of my punishments. Are you just going to give him water for a week? Well, yeah, because you don't need food. You just need water. That's right. all. I mean, yeah. science, science says that. And how's that going to get him from stop doing things? <laughs> I thought he really liked food. I thought if we could keep food away from him and know that I, I was serious. why he doesn't want to bring us mac and cheese. Yeah. Oh, Steve, it was such a sad scene. I had the upstairs level uh, bedroom when we starve lived. my child. And they had the, you know, like, a, they had those little cool little inflatable pools. Well, when I was younger, I got grounded without food. And Sarah and her friends are playing in the pool. And they're like, Joey, come down and play in the pool. And my dad just said, like, right next to me, he goes, oh, he's got to stay up there. He's not allowed to come down. He doesn't get any food. Yeah. He can't swim. He can't eat. That's right. I was trying. You know what? Joey and I was always a battle, and I never could get him to do anything I wanted him to do, and I was trying everything. And, he, and of course, he was stubborn. He was like, you're not going to. So it's like, all right, then no food and no life. That didn't yeah. work. Well, you, know, you just it was, ate all the Oreos. It was great for you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it was really great for me. Now I have a heart condition. So that really... <laughs> Is that why you were keeping him from the food so it was more for you? I would rather not comment on that particular question. Mm. We got cake tonight. Joey, you're punished. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are we having, honey? Oh, yeah, Joey, you did go to your room. You did something. Oh, you're going to do something. Hun, I'll have his slice of key lime of pie. Course. It's not a big deal. Yeah, he's, he's a bad he's, kid. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Your calls, your texts at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Let's go to Austin in Seattle. Austin, you are on The Rock. BJ, Shay. What's up, Austin? Uh, so yesterday, you guys were talking about the worst jobs ever. The worst jobs ever, and unfortunately, broadcaster was on the list, and it's all because I have to work with Steve. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, buddy? You got one? I'm doing it right now, which is a semi truck driver. Oh, that was you get the lot lizards. lizards. Yeah, you get that. Uh, and the crazy drivers that cut you off, and you can't stop on a dime. Oh, dude, I know I that I never does. get people that do that to that truck drivers. That does suck. I, you know, dude, I go out of my way. If I ever see a guy who's you know got a big rig that's got his blinker on, I go out of my way, flash my lights, let him go over. I don't. I just don't get why people don't realize that you guys, man, you guys, those those rigs are not easy to maneuver and stop on a dime. I don't get why people don't figure that out. Yeah, especially when you have your blinker on for like five miles and they don't care your... They are in the middle of the trailer. Well, it's Washington. When you put your blinker on, that means that car should speed up so you can't get in. That's I think that's the rule here in Washington. That's what I've learned. Downtown. Yeah. 
I know, Austin. I, I I don't understand it. You know, it's like it's just and what I don't get is like as a dude, I was just raised to like you know what, be part of a team, figure it all out, help be organized, you know. And so when I'm on the road, that's exactly what I do. I feel like we're all a team out there. And when you see a gigantic vehicle like that, who's probably bringing some delicious food or maybe some of my games, who knows? But I'm like, let this guy through. I don't understand why people can't figure that out. But yeah, dude, I I can appreciate why that's a bad gig. So and for that reason, Jane texts us since you guys meet celebs a lot. When's the last time where you were starstruck or the most memorable one? <laughs> mm. Oh, Vicky. Uh, well, we were, we were talking about this earlier because Danny and I uh, are really excited that Gabriel Iglesias is having his new show on Netflix come out next month. Fluffy. And I love Gabriel Iglesias. I've seen pretty much all his stand up, adore him. And he came in studio once. Yeah. And I, you couldn't tell, but inside I was freaking out, screaming like, oh. He even pointed out, he's like, oh, I like your shirt. I was wearing a nerdy shirt, and I was just like, "Uh, thanks, and just losing my mind inside my head. You wanted to get fluffy with it, didn't you? Not really. I just wanted to talk to him, and and I got to watch him and BJ talk about nerdy stuff, so I was like, okay, this is the closest I got. He's a big wrestling fan, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was it was really funny. Like we've had a lot of people like that in who I'll start talking nerdy stuff or you'll start talking wrestling stuff, but then the streams will cross, and we're we're very surprised. Like, wow, you do both. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Of, I mean, the big one for me was still James Hetfield from Metallica. <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple instances where I was within his presence, and I just honestly just probably, uh, and, and I would imagine I just looked really awkward and just stared at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one time before, like the what was it? The one where they did that CenturyLink Field? I think it was a Summer Sanitarium tour with like Limp Bizkit and and geez, who else? Mudvayne, Lincoln Park. I think it was on that bill as well as Deftones. And I was waiting to do an interview with Fred Durst of Limp Bizkit, who I wasn't as starstruck as I was for the first James Hetfield. <laughs> Although I still, like, Fred was always great. Uh, but James walks by, and it was just like I was frozen. I couldn't even say hi. And then the other time was when we got to interview Lars Ulrich before a Metallica show at the Key. And we were in their little rehearsal room where they just kind of work out stuff. And then he came in and kicked us out because he wanted to work on his stuff. And I didn't have anything to say other than just slowly walking out. But in my head, I'm like, of course, I'll leave wherever you want me to leave. I'm your James Hetfield. <laughs> and I stood by the door and listened to him, like, warm up. And it was, it was just the coolest thing. So James Hetfield for me. I, I, I get starstruck every time I see him. There was uh, oh, there 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 was a there was there was a couple of fun moments uh, as a, being a geek, um, and the first one was just was just like uh, I totally starstruck was William Shatner. The first time I got, I actually did a TV show in Rochester. I want to see that with a Star Trek marathon. I, ho- I know I don't know if I have the video anywhere. I don't know if I've kept it. I've got to go find it if see if I do. And he was in town for a convention, so he the, the TV station. I had nothing to do with his TV station. Got him because they. Ran the, they ran the reruns. So because of that, Shatner was willing to go do intros for the marathon. Mm-hmm. And I was the co-host. And oh, my God, I was just like, I was just like Chris Farley. You know, in that Saturday Night Live bit, you know, you remember when you were, you had the phaser and you said, Scotty, and he, oh, that was cool. Yeah. He just looked at me like, what is your issue? Don't we have a show that isn't there an episode we're going to be doing? And it was so bad that I thought we were doing both. Like he was going to, oh, he was going to close out the thing as well. And I said, okay, Mr. Shatner, we just have to do the closing now. And he goes, no, we don't. And he walked away. <laughs> I'm done with this guy. Oh, and I was just like, it was so starstruck and, and then so crushed that I was just such a loser because I wasn't even professional at all that I swore if I ever got a chance to meet him again, I would really get my act together. And um, I did at least, you know, and I don't think he remembered it was me because it was many, many years later when we met again at ECCC. And then the irony was that you were keeping it together being professional and some other person yeah. in the industry was being unprofessional. It was which so I think true. It's, it's almost like you got punished for how you were before. You're right. I mean, I, I, I made it right and we were having a good conversation. And and I was, screwed it up. I wasn't creeping him out. And then this other guy, and then it was like, well, he was like, I'm out. It was the same. It was like watching it happen again, but it wasn't to me, but it was the same. I got to get out of here. You're an idiot. Rev, how about you? Uh, going along the same lines with the Star Trek universe, it was when Leonard Nimoy called in for an interview, uh-huh. and it was just a subtle thing, since I'm the one answering the phones, and usually when we have a celebrity doing an interview, they'll have a handler or some sort of person doing uh, the, the setup for that, and when it called, it was like, it was just, hello, this is Leonard, and it was one of those things where suddenly Leonard Nimoy is just talking to me on the phone, right? and I had to get it together, and it was really, really hard just to be able to be like, okay, all right. 
right, he, sir, here's the setup and here's everything going on with it, and 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 you're great. Remember when you had pointy ears? Yeah, that, that was cool. cool. <laughs> I can appreciate that, Rev, because it's one thing when we're just you know he we, we know he's here to talk to us, and so it's more professional. But just that random call like that, yeah. And it was just like it sounded like my grandpa just calling. Yes, this is Leonard. And I was like, oh my god. What about you, Danny? Dexter Holland. Yeah. I'm the offspring. Last year at uh, Sabroso Taco Fest down at White River, I got to go backstage and do the stage announcement. And he was just kind of hang- hanging back there with his sunglasses on and his hat. He wasn't like stage ready at all. And I was like, that's Dexter. And I went up. I was like, how's it going? Can, can I get a quick selfie? And he's like, sure. And right. so I took one. And that's all I could say. It's been great him, if you walked off the stage, you go, warm them up for you, Dex. <laughs> <laughs> Slap his butt. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Yeah. Good luck following that. Yeah. <laughs> Who's somebody that you would be starstruck if you ever got to meet? Oh, I think of Paul Stanley because of the sure. topic we did earlier. I want to meet Paul Stanley, but I, I would definitely, I would. He's 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 my guy when it comes to Kiss. I, I mean, of yeah. course, I love Peter Chris, but Paul Stanley is the star child. I yeah, I can appreciate <laughs> that. I think for me it would be you know what because I talk about her all the time. I think it would be Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, dude, she's so amazing at her job, dude. I love the stuff that she does, and I just, wow. I just I look, would not have expected that no, from me no. either. Of yeah, she, all people, but because I would want to talk the craft with her because mm-hmm. I just love, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an acting nerd, uh, and she is so good. But and I think I would just be an idiot, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, Hi, Meryl, I saw you in the Bridges of Mad the Kali, and I, the Prada movie, and then the the one where you were the nun, you know. I, I just, I, and I'd want to ask her like how what advice would you give i mean i'd be that idiot i, I think really stone wouldn't. cold steve austin also really yeah because he's the dude and i'm sure everyone that's ever met him that i know has met him he's awesome but you know it's just he's one of, he's an icon and he's a badass yeah i mean he's no meryl streep of course <laughs> no he's no meryl streep yeah yeah uh, yeah so she's the first one that comes to mind of all I, the people i would have never if you said list of like uh, five people you think bj would be starstruck by meryl streep would not have been on my list i'm trying to think of people who i put on a pedestal because of this job and i've got to meet people i realize they're not as pedestally as i used to think they were in other is words that a word yeah probably it is, not. yes <laughs> yeah but so google it yeah so for the most part i know how to be professional around everybody like i really trained myself no matter what but she's the one where I go oh yeah I think I would I wouldn't even know what because someone says Meryl Streep the worst actress on the planet Whoa. WTF BJ ew okay I don't know I can't even wow. say I can't say anything to that I mean the, everyone has their tastes I, I guess I just thought of somebody I would love to meet and I would be totally starstruck yeah you're gonna make fun of me Danny DeVito I I've, would love to meet him. I've met him. What? How is he? Is he's he cool? the coolest dude in the world. He's like, he'd be just really nice. When did you get to meet Danny DeVito? <laughs> Many years ago, I got flown out to California to do to cover the Man on the Moon screening uh, oh, for yeah. the Andy Kaufman movie, which was awesome because I'm a huge Andy Kaufman fan, and I got to spend some time with Bob Zmuda. Uh, I got to meet uh, Andy Kaufman's legit, gr- the, the girlfriend. Uh, oh, nice. Was it Lynn, I think, if I remember correctly? But anyways, I got to meet them, Got to, and then I got to meet Danny DeVito, and Danny DeVito is the number one guy for my pops like he loves Danny DeVito yeah. so I went up to him I was like hey man it's so nice to meet you my dad would be losing his mind if, and which I, don't, I hope he didn't take it as an insult but I, I didn't mean it as that like you're an old guy but like I said my dad would be losing his mind if he was here he's such a big fan of yours and then he goes well you want me to sign something for your dad I, I, and oh, he's, he's like yeah well, what's your dad's name so I gave him the, the like the media info packet oh. that had like the man on the moon cover and he said to Bill something like your son's cool or a loser I don't remember what he wrote. One or the other. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but like, really, was heartfelt about what he wrote, and just said, "That's tell your dad thanks. That means a lot." He could not be nicer. See, that's all I hear from him. That he's and just he's your genuine. height, so you can see eye to eye. Yes, he is. I think he's actually a inch and a half shorter than me. Really? I think he's five foot. I'm five wow. foot one. Wow, you would be taller than Danny. Oh, that's awesome. You know, post now with it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I think I'd be even more nervous to meet him. Oh, back yeah. then it was like Danny DeVito's cool. He was in Cheers, and yeah. No, you're not cheers. In that taxi, yeah, that's too. He's way shorter than he's me. He's four ten. He's four ten. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know I that's an interesting. You know, Steve. Now that I think about it. If I got to meet Danny DeVito, but I'll tell you, after meeting Ice Cube, but that was the last one that was a little nerve wracking for me because I mean I couldn't believe he was coming in because he's just like ginormous as far as like you know everything he's done. Yeah, that was the last one uh, that that I was like, oh, and he boy. was awesome, and he was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he really, really. It's funny, you know, a, a lot of the guys that I am so just terrified to meet uh, for whatever reason have really been good, and like you said, down to earth is really it's. 
it's sort of an example. Sam Kinison was somebody I was really afraid to meet, the, the great, great comic, and he was also down to earth, great guy. Um, yeah, that, but Meryl Streep, that's it, buddy. Meryl Streep. That's all I can think of. I think Patrick Stewart would also be a little challenging. I almost got to interview him on his, uh, but then it got taken away from me, and that was kind of a bummer. I really that would have been hard, but he was he's another guy I got a lot of respect for that I might geek out on. I got, I mean, I guess that Howard Stern. Oh I, God, I, I would oh, be yeah. so nervous. Yeah. To I can see that, and everything I've heard, especially if he knows that you're in the industry behind the scenes. Of course, he's a certain way when the mics are on, but from what I hear, if, if he knows you're in, he treats you like gold. Oh, really? That's the stories I've heard from people that you would never expect. That's like, why I'd be afraid to meet him. Right. But, I mean, obviously he has such a profound influence on me wanting to do what I do for a living. Yeah. I mean, it would just, I don't know if I'd be able to even formulate a sentence in front of him. It would definitely be awkward at first. Yeah. And hopefully he could appreciate that because, you know, you hear his stories from his his career and his life of being awkward behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, and you're right. Howard is, I mean, look, Howard has been Howard. And so, of course, his on-air, his on-air persona has definitely got him, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, perceptions from people. But I've also heard what you've heard, Steve, that he's a great dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I worked in Rochester and, you know, he definitely had some combative battles with uh, my old host brother, Weeze. And so there was a little flavoring there sure but um i have heard nothing but good stuff about him behind the scenes yeah that would be i I would put that at the top of my list as far as people i'd be starstruck to meet you think you'd still be like the chris farley oh bro i would i would instantly turn into a teenager he was your guy 100% 100% my yeah, guy. Yeah, I, um... I mean, truly, the, the greatest. Yeah, and for, me. and for me, of course, you know, my radio guy was Charles Lacquadera, mm-hmm. which you set up and had on the show, which made it easier when I went out to meet him, but I kinda... I was did everything I could not to be a fanboy when I finally did go meet him in Maui, when he... Because, you know, he'd say, hey, if you're ever out in Hawaii, come meet me, and I, my wife and I used to go a lot, and I'd be like, alright, I'm gonna go do this, and uh, I was nervous, but I said, listen, keep it together, buddy. <laughs> I mean, keep it together. You can't be that guy... But, I mean, I grew up, and like you did, grew up listening to the guy. How can I not be the 12-year-old and me not be fanboy? So he says, when Seattle hosted the first zombie con, George Romero would just hang out with all the smokers and chat. That threw me off as I was just standing at a booth, uh, autograph booth uh, that was set up behind me. I turn around, and there he is. That's oh, that's cool. super cool. That's very cool. Oh, he, did, he says, turn around, I saw Captain Kirk's killer, Malcolm McDowell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he stayed was chatting with too. me while waiting on the volunteers were finished setting up. Super nice guy. Another person I agree with the other texter, Meryl Streep. Yuck. <laughs> wow. Damn. A lot of hate. Right? Now she's, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. She's got a lot of awards. I mean, she's really, I mean, if you, look, you may not like her movies, but her, she, her different roles are pretty amazing. Like, she just makes you believe she's whoever she is. Mm. It's not an easy thing to do as an actor. A lot of people, you go, oh, you're playing the same role, same role, same role. But, hey, look, if you don't like her movies, what are you going to do? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, she's surely not a rock and roll actor, that's for sure. Tom Hanks for me. Oh. My God, if I met Tom Hanks, I would probably not be able to, like, say one word to him other than just, like, hi. Yeah. Because I mean, he's just like larger than life to me. Like, yeah, that, that's a good one. That is a good one. Any president. Ooh. As well. Obama. Yeah. I think yeah. I would be really nervous around Obama. It, it would just be you're in, you know, you're like this guy's the most powerful person in our country. Yeah. 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 I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. Yeah, you're right. I can see that. I, you know, when Mark Marin said that he interviewed Obama, he was he, he said it was like the toughest guest he had because he, again, it's the president. It's one thing, you know, you interview a lot of people, and so yeah, I can see that. So much a surprise. Mix doesn't want to interview his real dad, Marv Albert. Yes, yes. I'd probably punch him in the face, and it wouldn't even be fair. It would just be all this ha- pent up hostility that you guys have given me towards Marv you Albert. You hit True. my mom. Yeah, you are oh. not my father. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Honestly, or you should just pretend that he might be and be like, "Hey, you owe me allowances for the last, you know, however yeah, many right? years." That'd be so great if he was. <laughs> well, that would be so great if on his deathbed he's like, "Tell Steve." <laughs> That'd be so yes. great. Oh, yeah. That made me think of Jerry Remy. I also fanboyed out at him, the uh, Red Sox broadcaster. God, that was uncomfortable. And he looked uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, it was. I could see as it was happening. Jerry was like, somebody save me, please. Who is this crazy person? That's the worst part when you realize that oh. you're being that person and you're like, well, I can't stop now. I know. And it was just worse and worse. And the poor dude was just trying to eat his meal. And, and, more. <laughs> and if you listen to Jerry, he's at the age now where he just wants to not be bothered by anybody. So it was was even worse that all he ever says in his broadcast is, I can't wait when this is over, go right back to the hotel. You know, it's just like when he's on the road and I'm like, oh, and I kept him from getting to the hotel. Oh, I'm that guy. Oh, that was bad. Vicky Vet. That's another one. Who? 
Who? Google her. All right. Oh, is she a porn star? I mean, she was very important in my growing up years. Oh, wow. Okay, then. Do you, you want me to do the, you the favor, BJ? Vicky Vett. So she's got to be an older woman now, right? But she's 53 now. But okay. still looks great. Yeah. Oh, wow. That and is she's Vicky. still doing work. Good for you, Vicky. All right. I mean, Vicky Vett. Yeah. Wow. Vicky yeah. Vett. You, apparently, you liked uh, the buxom one, Steve. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Vicky Vett is a full-figured buxom bombshell. Thank you for that, Steve. You're wow. welcome. Yeah. I would not have picked that. You, you, I, you don't usually like girls that are that curvy. I like all girls, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. I do. I don't have a set type. I thought you liked them a little thinner than that. Not no. saying that Vicky, not saying Vicky no. Vett looks bad. It's just that that wouldn't be the kind of girl I would say if you said, who's the one that Steve liked? Well, I'll send you some of these videos that, uh, okay. as, as a frame of reference. Yes, okay. please. Yeah. Wow. Okay, then. All right, here's a question for you. <laughs> That's right. a great way to end this whole thing. Well, you wanted to know. I did. I really, now I know. Uh, here's, a, here's a big question. What do Ryan Castle and dancing have in common? I'm going to tell you at 952 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. He's the drunk in charge. Now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and dancing have in common? You know, before I worked here, I was a dancer. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty much the same job. You work for tips and you get to listen to Def Leppard every day. Yeah. Oh, that's it. yeah. <laughs> Are you working at the Foxy Lady? No, what's the one? That one on Aurora. Lusty uh, ba- Lady. Bear, barely. But dancing, dancing, bear, bear, bear dancing. Oh, yeah. That one? Yeah. What? It's closed now. Oh, is it closed uh, now? Well, that's where I worked before I was here. Yeah. Oh. I see you more as a sugars <laughs> kind of guy. But it's like bear, but it's like B-A-R-E. That's right. right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Sugars. That's my hood. Oh, sugars. I do Honey. remember. Yeah, sugars. All the good yeah. places. Yeah. You were a connoisseur, weren't you? Well, no, I was just a, you know... Enthusiast. I was just trying to help people get through college. That's what you were doing. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah, he was, you know, a benefactor. Yeah. You're a good man. Yeah. You're a good man. So it says they both involve doing lines. Uh, oh, like line dancing. Yeah, I get exactly it. Exactly like line dancing. Oh, that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, Ryan Castle, he's got a line of 12 packs for you. That's coming up after. BJ and Miggs play of the day. I got a lot of respect because I was in the Scouts and I just, boy, I just I can't picture you as a Boy Scout. Yeah, I was. I just couldn't hack it. I mean, they, they, you, you needed to be really, you needed to have your stuff together in order to be an Eagle Scout. You had to really be good. I mean, I was a Weblow before that. And, um, is that a Weeblow? Yeah, it's a Weeblow. Well, it's, it's actually Weblow because we didn't like the Weeblow for that reason. <laughs> I would try to call it a web low, like Uranus and Uranus. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, there's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and, and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or, or bankruptcy. Uh, there's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney. And right, my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy. My job is to help you to, to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, what benefits it's going to have for you, and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter. Keeping up with the flood of news every single day can be quite stressful. There is climate change happening. There's the pandemic, labor movements, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. Hi, I am Gideon Resnick, host of Crooked Media's What a Day. Each week, Travel Anderson, Priyanka Arabindi, Josie Duffy, Rice, and I are going to break down the biggest news stories of the day in a way that hopefully doesn't always make you want to cry. New episodes of What a Day drop every weekday at 5 a.m. Eastern. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.